Nobody likes lawyers. Pick any poll in recent years when people are asked what they think of various professions, and lawyers come out at the bottom of those lists, right? In fact, this isn't a recent phenomenon. Even Shakespeare was a hater. Or was he? During our time here today, I'm going to try to convince you that you can actually learn quite a bit from lawyers, not just about the law, but about life and about leadership. Specifically, there are three attributes that good prosecutors have that if you adopt them in your daily lives, it'll make your lives and your relationships much better. Now, you might be thinking, why three? Power of threes. So uh, when we first come into the JAG Corps, and one of the first courses we go to is the trial and defense advocacy course. And there was this amazing instructor I had, and he taught us about the power of threes. It's actually not a lawyer thing. It's a marketing concept. And there's research that backs this up. So when you try to persuade people with three points, it's persuasive. But beyond that, if you go to four, skepticism sets in. So bear with me for a second. We're going to digress. And there's going to be some audience participation. This is all around you. You just never really thought about it. So help me out here. Rice Krispies, snap, crackle, Chick-fil-A, eat more, Campbell's soup, mm-mm, good, you got it. All right, so you remember these things, right? Because it's three. So here are my three Ps, purpose, pure, passion. Say it with me, purpose, pure, passion. Let's start with purpose. Any good trial lawyer is going to turn over every rock, they're going to interview every witness, and they're going to read every single document. And they do this in an effort to find the truth. So I'm going to share with you a story that illustrates this point. I once prosecuted an attempted murder case. This case involved a male defendant who was estranged from his family. In fact, he had been moved out of the house at the time that the crime occurred. And one night, after a big fight with his ex-wife, he came in the dark, took a baseball bat out of the outside shed, went into the house, and took it to his wife's head while she was sleeping in bed. Now, the interesting thing about this is that his biological daughter was sleeping right next to her, remained untouched. But when the stepdaughter ran into the room when she heard the screaming, he took the bat to her as well. And so when the police came, they found him three miles away in his apartment, sound asleep, clothes folded up neatly, not a drop of blood anywhere to be found. It was a good case, but it was what we call a circumstantial case. So what we had was a bat, a shaky eyewitness, and a motive. So as the prosecutors we did not sleep. We did not rest. We fought till the bitter end. Now, the investigators, and you've seen this on TV, right? They used the black light on the clothes. They swabbed the clothes, and they couldn't find any blood. And frankly, that was the biggest problem with our case. It made no sense because the crime scene was awful. So we convinced the investigators, send the clothes to the crime lab anyway. And they did. And literally the night before trial, they found one drop of blood on his sneaker that matched the DNA of his daughter, his stepdaughter. And that one drop of blood made all the difference in the case. He pled guilty, they were safe, and justice was served. Rick Warren, in his book, A Purpose Driven Life, has this amazing first sentence, and it is this. It's not about you. It's all about something bigger than you, a concept, a purpose larger than you that's worth your time and your talent and your heart. So for prosecutors, that purpose is justice. So I ask you, what is your purpose? Is it family? 
Is it equality? Is it community? Like a good lawyer, you should know your purpose. Point two, pure. One of the first things they teach us is, don't try to be somebody else in the courtroom. Be yourself. Be true to yourself. So if your purpose is about fighting for something larger than yourself, being pure is about being true to yourself. So for me, I always tell people, you can take the girl out of Philly, but you can't take the Philly out of the girl, right? So I know that about myself. I embrace it. I'm sarcastic. It's who I am. So uh, actually, one case I tried here many, many years ago involved a police officer. And his job, of course, was to protect and defend. But what he was doing, actually, at night was walking around these various buildings and stealing stuff from people. And so when the police that weren't doing those things investigated him and researched his car, they found a McDonald's bag full of cash, amongst other things. So when, after he was found guilty, we had the sentencing phase of the trial. And as is so often the case, the defense counsel gets up and says, this was all just a mistake. Well, I couldn't let that one go. I said, you know, a mistake is ordering Happy Meal number one instead of Happy Meal number two when you're at McDonald's. But we all know what his Happy Meal looks like. Ka-ching, right? Prosecution Exhibit A, the bag full of cash. Yeah, it got a laugh. The judge liked it. His family didn't. But uh, he, got, he got a good sentence. Um, the point is, you know, I, I'm comfortable with that. I can do that. But someone else that may have tried to pull that stunt, maybe it wouldn't work so well for them. So John Maxwell in his book, few communicate, Everyone Communicates, Few Connect, talks about this. He talks about how effective leaders, they know what they can and cannot do. They feel comfortable in their own skin. And when they communicate, they find that sweet spot. So if you want to lead, if you want to have good relationships in work, out of work, in your community, be real, be authentic, like a good lawyer, be pure. Third point, passion. I'm sure you've heard it said before, if you don't care about what you do, no one else will. So if, being, if your purpose is your why, your passion is your how and your passion drives your purpose. The story I'm going to tell you about here is a true story. It was a very emotional case. It was one of the first ones I did. It involved sexual assault. And in this case, uh, there was a male defendant, female victim, and they had had a very long-standing relationship when the assault had happened. I'm going to fast forward to trial. And that very first day when we had the jury selection, and really, as, as in many of these cases, it came down to the victim's credibility. Because usually there's only two people in the room. So we talked about credibility, and I asked the, the members, you tell me what you're looking for to determine if someone is credible. And one of those members said, I want the person to look me in the eye. Hold that thought. So there we were, day one. And she's on the stand all day long. I do my direct exam. The defense does their cross exam. And the judge breaks for the day. And by the way, it was brutal. So the next thing that was going to happen is in the morning, I was going to put her back on the stand because the way the prosecution works is you get the last word if you're trying to prove something beyond a reasonable doubt. And I felt we were losing to be honest with you. So I went home that night and I thought to myself, with the limited time we have, what is going to turn the tide here? And then I thought, passion. So I called the victim up that night at her house. And I said, Sergeant X, we're losing right now. And I'm going to ask you one question tomorrow, and only one question. 
and I want you to think about it all night long. I told her the question, and I hung up the phone. Needless to say, the next day comes, and the trial begins again. I stand up. I point at that jury member that said looking in the eye was important to her. And I said, Sergeant X, you look this jury in the eye right now, and you tell them why they should believe you. She did, for 45 minutes straight. And it was amazing. And he was convicted. And justice was served. Tony Robbins, in his book, Unlimited Power, talks about seven characteristics that effective leaders have. And one of those is passion. And how he describes it is that your passion is the fuel that drives action. Now, in our case, I think there's a good, this is a good example of two kinds of passion that we see here. First, we had that victim on the stand and the passion that she felt about what happened to her and how she conveyed that then to the jury. And secondly, we had a prosecutor who cared enough to make that phone call that night. And so what I would submit to you that passion is a lot about caring. And I like that analogy of a fuel, but what I would also submit to you, passion is that flame in your belly that no one else can light but you. And when that flame is lit, it starts traveling from person to person to person until you light the world all around you. So if you want to have an awesome life, be passionate like a lawyer. So those are the three P's. Purpose. Pure. Thank you, pure. pure. Passion. Passion. OK, let's start where we began. Let's talk about Shakespeare for a minute. So what does this actually mean? You know, I always tell my clients three things. I tell them facts matter, facts drive opinions, and our opinions are only as good as the facts you give me. So what are the facts here? This is actually a quote out of Henry V, and it was a peasant that was roiling up, right, anarchy. And so what does this mean? I'll give you the lawyer answer. It depends. There's actually two camps of thought here. One is that it's the most hilarious lawyer joke ever, right? So this is a peasant, and the first person he'd want to kill are lawyers, but of course. The second camp is, if you're plotting anarchy, if you're plotting anarchy, who's the first ones you want to take out? The ones that stand for law and order, if you're trying to have chaos. So you decide, probably only Bill Shakespeare knows the right answer. But I hope in our short time together that through the power of threes and the three Ps that you've learned a th thing or two, or maybe three, from this lawyer about life and leadership. Thank you very much.